Hello there, and welcome back for another haunted night at the museum. Tonight, we'll be looking even further into the past at the mysteries of ancient Egypt. Here at the Museum of Antiquities, we have a number of beautiful replica Egyptian pieces and a few awe-inspiring originals that can be traced thousands of years into the past. These artifacts are often associated with the spiritual and the supernatural. And so tonight, I will guide you along the permeable boundary between ancient Egypt and the afterlife. While the ancient Egyptians didn't know about or celebrate Samhain or Halloween, their world in many ways revolved around the cycle of life and death, destruction and renewal. Egyptian society was dependent on the Nile River for its prosperity, as its life-giving waters allowed for trade, agriculture, and travel. The river had a dualistic personality, though, as the rushing waters threatened communities with floods and was filled with ever-present predators like hippos and crocodiles. The sun, too, was seen as a symbol of this cycle, as every night it would delve deep into the underworld and defeat the villainous Seth and his forces of chaos, saving the world of order and daylight by every dawn. Death itself was seen as a facet of this grand cosmic cycle, as gods and humans alike would die and find their spirits renewed and given new life. Both the Nile's flooding and the sun's procession were symbolic to ancient Egyptians of life and death, and so one can see why their worldview was fixated by it. These cycles were thought to be eternal in nature, ordained by the gods. They called this grand cycler order Mayat, which was the responsibility of the god king Horus to uphold. The pharaohs, those great kings and queens of long dynasties, gained their power from gods like Horus, and so too became partly responsible for upholding and acknowledging these cycles through worship and observation. Because of the Egyptians' strong belief in the afterlife, images related to death in particular, life after death, were very common and were represented in artworks and reflected in the goods buried with the dead. They adorned their sarcophagi, their tombs, and even their own dead bodies with images that conveyed spiritual and personal messages. Burials included everything that deceased would need to carry on living the good life in the afterlife, including food, incense, clothing, furniture, makeup, jewelry, and other riches. Sometimes statues of the deceased and hieroglyphic messages about them adorned tombs. These objects were not merely decorative or practical, but also often had mystical purposes and were central to a variety of rituals related to the Egyptian burial practices. Great examples of Egyptian burial artwork are these tiny statuettes known as Ushabti figurines. Each of these figurines date to over 2,000 years old, with the oldest possibly being dated back to 1069 BCE. Each is made of faience, a ceramic that the ancient Egyptians loved to use in their artwork. But what are Ushabtis? Well, one might notice first that these figures look like little mummies, or even sarcophagi. It's no great coincidence, as Ushabtis were buried alongside the dead within the tomb. Known as answerers, Ushabtis were a type of spiritual servant who would act as helpers to the deceased once they had passed into the afterlife. The idea of being buried with a servant to aid you in the afterlife actually comes from the pre-dynastic period in Egypt, when the rich sometimes had human servants mummified and buried alongside them. In place of the sacrificed human servants, Ushabti figurines began to appear in grave sites around the year 2000 BCE and remained popular for nearly 2000 years. The Egyptians held the idea that the immortal spirit still held an attachment to the material world, lending to the prevalence of expensive burials. But they also firmly believed that the dead should be protected as well, and so the emergence of tomb guardians was a logical extension of the Egyptian belief system. Many of you will recognize this figure immediately, the Sphinx. The Sphinx is a magical creature that has the head of a human and the body of a lion sitting at rest. While this Sphinx is quite a bit smaller than the one next to the Great Pyramids at Giza, this one is a replica of one of 600 such statues that served as guardians along the so-called Sacred Way at the Serapium in Saqqara, which was a massive funerary complex only a short distance away from modern-day Cairo. Like the Great Sphinx at Giza, this Sphinx was also seen as a guardian, a watcher of the dead who helped keep evil away. Discovered in 1851, the original of this Sphinx now resides in the Egyptian Museum in Berlin. Just like the diminutive Ushabtis, the mighty Sphinx had an important purpose within the scope of Egyptian burials. The regal Sphinx, whose face at times seems to resemble that of a pharaoh, was a calm and watchful presence among the dead. Their task was all-important, as they watched over the deceased in their tombs, protecting both the mummified body and the transcendent spirit. 
At death, the ancient Egyptians believed that their immortal spirit, the Ba, was separated from its earthly vessel, leaving behind the mummified body known as the Ka. The Ba would journey into the afterlife, and the Ka would remain behind on earth, acting as a sort of anchor for the person's soul. However, the Egyptians believed that the soul still needed the body to exist, and so burial practices evolved through ancient Egyptian history to maintain the body, even long after the person had died. The prevalence of Egyptian mummies lends credence to this. If you lived in ancient Egypt and had the means to have yourself mummified after death, you would. The pursuit of eternal life was a serious matter to the Egyptians. Just look at the pyramids. Very few people had the wealth required to construct a tomb, however. And so most people in ancient Egypt would have been buried in the desert with a few basic possessions. But here at the Museum of Antiquities, we have what may be the most important part of an Egyptian tomb on display. This is the false door of the priestess Irti, a woman who lived in Egypt approximately 4,200 years ago. Irti was a priestess of the cult of Hathor, a mother goddess associated with the sky, who was of great importance to the ancient Egyptian state religion. We know about Irti because this limestone panel is covered in Egyptian hieroglyphics referring to her. Hieroglyphics was the written language utilized by pharaohs and priesthoods of the kingdom. Tomb inscriptions often had magical purposes as spells or prayers used to protect the interred dead, a practice started by the pharaohs and eventually adopted by nobles, such as Irti. This artifact is called a false door for an incredible reason. It didn't have anything to do with tricking sneaky grave robbers, though ancient Egypt had its share of those. Instead, the false door was intended to replicate a doorway so that the tomb's inhabitant had a means by which to enter and exit her tomb. Indeed, the false door was considered a spiritual portal to the afterlife, the doorway through which Irti's Ba, her spirit, would cross in order to enter or exit the afterlife. Irti's own Ka, her mummified body, would have been placed in her tomb, complete with offerings of food and other accoutrements. Passing through the false door, Irti would reunite with her mortal form and make use of the offerings left for her. This is what the ancient Egyptians believed, and yet there are people here at the Museum of Antiquities who have reason to believe that Irti's false door may have never really closed. For years, staff and volunteers at the museum have experienced inexplicable happenings that are just too strange to explain. In one instance, a priceless glass vessel rotated inside its locked and sealed display case without anybody ever having touched it. Footsteps have been heard in the gallery with no one there. Inexplicable knockings on doors, too. Perhaps the strangest incident was an ancient coin winding up on the inside of our office printer. Could it be that Irti's restless spirit still uses her false door? Most places in Saskatchewan don't feature a portal to the Egyptian afterlife. And so the strange occurrences here at the museum have some pondering a more paranormal possibility. One thing is for certain, Irti would find herself far away from her tomb but not everything here would be unfamiliar to her. The Museum of Antiquities proudly hosts a wealth of ancient artwork, and Irti would no doubt recognize the friendly Sphinx, or even one of the Ushaptis, something she herself may have been buried with. What do you think? Could these statues really carry spirits of their own? And does Irti still walk the halls of the Peter McKinnon building today, far from the lands of her ancient home? We can only hope that Irti has her rest, and yet the possibility of a truly haunted night at the museum remains a frighteningly tantalizing idea. Join us in the next episode for a look at a pair of figurines with slightly more sinister origins, as we look at the Assyrian inspiration for the classic horror film The Exorcist. Thanks for watching, and remember, have a happy Halloween. Goodbye!